it, the live thingy is up. Well, it's up over here. There for me, right there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> over there. Okay. I think I think we're live. Um, yay. We are a little late due to having to troubleshoot our own technical difficulties. Now Which we managed. We yes. Here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now I'm wondering. Well, I don't I don't know. Stephanie wanted to attend but wasn't sure. Okay. So can I send her a link? If so, what would I send her? Um you could just send her a link to your channel, I think, to your YouTube channel. Because okay. it will be live streaming on your YouTube channel. Let's see. Oh, it's going to make a noise. Maybe? No, good, not. All right. Oh, okay. It does say it is showing that it's going on. Ah, okay. So... And Stephanie is here. Oh, is she? Oh, I guess I don't have to send her the link then. Okay. Hey, hey welcome, hey, Stephanie. <laughs> we made it. She's multitasking. Stephanie, do you ever not multitask? Woohoo. Yeah. Very exciting. Oh, and we all welcomed her. I'm feeling a bit like a multiple personality going in that we've got the three, and they all said welcome. Right. Because it's whatever goes in has to go into all three comment streams. Okay. Cool. That's fine. I think at least that's what I'm assuming. Oh, I see Stephanie's comment. Nope, she never doesn't multitask. And I, 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 I know. Ah, okay. We can. It's amazing like that. We do have comment control. If you want to make a comment. Oh, I see. It says all. One channel. Got it. So I can comment as me. Mm -hmm. Hiya. Or as God. <laughs> okay. <Crawl>. okay. <laughs> Such fun. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm Very cool. all sort of buttons. Cool. I'm gonna quit quit pushing buttons. <laughs> so how shall we begin here? Well, let's see. Do we want to do a little review in case folks are watching this? Because I did have people tell me they watched it afterward. Yes, I had. I had so. a few people, strangers. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. I I told happened. my teenager that you know part of the job for Gen Z is to come up with a word for people that we correspond with every day online whom we will never meet in real life, yes. but we consider friends anyway. Yes. Would they be Vens? Virtual friends? Oh, Vens. interesting. <laughs> Veens? So. No, like Veens. Instead of Fiends, they're Veens. It's under consideration, apparently. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> yes, I think a review would be great, especially for people tuning in after this is done, which there are going to be lots of them. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. Okay. okay. <laughs> Let's think positive. Sure. Yes. Yes, please. <laughs> okay, so this is our second exchange. Mm -hmm. Can we call it ekphrastic? That's such a lovely word. It is such a lovely word. I wasn't sure. Um, mm -hmm. First got acquainted with it with the um, that show in Kansas City that I did the Pelican for. And that's what they titled it was ekphrasis. So I'm like, oh, this is kind of an ekphrastic exchange or something. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And the uh, Columbia Art League shows um, and the their interpretation, the original ekphrastic yeah. adventure. Yes, what got me started in all this. <coughs> yes, we did one earlier. Now I did the Aura Pendula, mm -hmm. and um, I can show that. In yes, theory. Please. Show the work. Uh, let's see. Can I do? I'm looking at. Um, well, how do I show you my screen? That would be one of the other little icon things down there. I see new layouts, shift F5, F6, cinema layout. Do I want? Feel free to mess with any of that. Let's see. I'm going to push one. What happens when I do nothing? Hmm. Share. Ah, share screen. Share screen, share screen, share screen, share screen. Ooh, it does a whole lot of things. 
Chrome tab. I want this one. Share. Is it sharing? Woo, it is. Okay, so yeah. there's the Aura Pendula I did mm -hmm. based on your Casper Aura Pendula writing. Um, mm -hmm. Colored pencils on this black paper, which I absolutely love. It doesn't quite in real life have the punch that this screenshot has of it, mm. unfortunately. So I'm, I'm kind of, you know, like, okay, if I do another one, how am I going to punch that up? And I do mm. not know yet. So there it is. All right. Do I stop sharing? Let's try that. See what happens. Stop and then we sharing. come back. And there we are. Okay, good. I can not <laughs> see anything because it took me to a different screen. So I'm like, I'm flying blind. Right. This is great. Just close right. my eyes. Yeah. All right. And so what about yours? <clears throat> okay. So Hope Martin is, um, as I gestured toward Hope, uh, who is sharing oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> um, Hope Martin is a visual artist. I am a paranormal cozy mystery writer. Hope and I have known each other a long time in a variety of contexts. Um, the ekphrastic stuff that we're talking about, we've uh, previously both been parts of um, art shows that paired writers and artists to um, use each other as inspiration springboards. And with that, that process is actually called ekphrasis and goes all the way back to ancient Greece and probably other parts of the world at other times as well. Um, so last year, Hope approached me and said, do you want to try to do something like that? Like just the two of us? And I said, sure. Um, so the mystery series I write is set in Casper, Missouri, which is a college town and cosmic crossroads. Uh, Casper is a place where parallel worlds intersect and are visible one into another, but there's not much interaction among those worlds. Casper's pretty well sealed. You can see, but you can't touch kind of thing. Um, and so I sent Hope a description of one of the other universes that kind of drifts through our world's Casper, or, you know, the, the book world's Casper. <laughs> since Casper doesn't exist in our world, I have to remind myself of that. Right, time. right. Um, and that's where the Oro Pendula came from um, that Hope was just showing you. And then I took for inspiration one of the sets of sketches that Hope has already done, her Haunted Wood series. Yes. And then I, just as I had written up a little something um, about the Oro Oro Pendola, Oro Pendola, that, that Hope uh, did the beautiful sketch of. Um, then I wrote up a something in response to Hope's Haunted Woods series. And Hope, do you want to show them your Haunted Woods? Sure. Let me pull that ones? up. So let's see if I go to share. Now that you've got share the Haunted, screen. now that you've got the screen share trick for the Haunted Woods. Yes. So, oh, not that one. I want... Well, now I have all these tabs open. What's it called? Photo in. And you should know, Hope and I are very proud of ourselves for figuring out how to do live streams together. And the teenagers <laughs> in our lives all think it is ridiculously hilarious that we are so stinking proud of ourselves. That's right. All right. Is it working? I see it. Yes. There we go. Okay. Oh, and, oh, now I'm, it's showing me I'm back where I can see things now. So you can see... <laughs> One of the sketchbook spreads and uh, yes, yeah, mm -hmm. yep, yep, yep. So that's one of the that's uh, the hunt. Those are you've got more haunted woods pieces, also. There are a few pieces. here and there, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And they've just kind of started as just a mystery. sketching exercise, mm -hmm. and then these these little guys started showing up cat yes. shaped things that you wrote about so wonderfully. Yep. It was, it, that was just so, I was tickled. That was so cool. Yep. The little tricksters in the woods. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, fun. So that's, we did an exchange um, in summer 2021 with those pieces. Um, and then I spent the live stream kind of reading 
uh, we, we did our live stream at the end of that exchange. Right. We are going to do another exchange and this live stream is at the top of the exchange. So we haven't done anything with the new exchange yet, um, except that I've identified um, a work of hopes that I want to write about. And I have given hope a very basic topic that I will be writing up for her this week. Um, that was the funniest comment. <laughs> So can I, can I show them? Yeah, go ahead and show them the, the piece that I will be working on. All right, let's see. And feel free to, to tell us uh, what you know of this piece. <laughs> okay, of the piece that I did, yes. I yeah. definitely can, can share a lot with that. Let me pull it up. I actually have it ready here. So I'll be writing up an entry, and we've fictionalized these as entries for the uh, Casper Convention and Visitors Bureau Ghostly oh, yes. Plants and Ghostly Wildlife Guides. Ooh. So Casper's paranormal tourists um, can all come and see this stuff uh, as yes. it kind of so fades cool. in and out from other universes. Oh, I'm so excited about that. <laughs> So hopefully you can see on the screen there the mm -hmm. imperative constraint piece. And uh, the title for this one actually came from, from Stephanie's husband. Okay. Was his idea. I couldn't think of what to name it. It was This was for the one read that the library <coughs> did. Uh, so there, the theme was confinement. Mm -hmm. And um, it's based on or inspired by uh, the Amor Tolls book, A Gentleman in Moscow. Let's see if I can find okay. a bigger one. Mm -hmm. These are kind of upside down. Mm -hmm. because at the t this is my, actually, I like it best this way, but everyone I talked to said, no, no, it looks better the other way. <laughs> so I ended up um, flipping it around, uh -huh. but this kind of evolved over a series of images and thinking about confinement, being confined for your own good kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So you know, I'm out there with the chickens going, well, they're kind of confined for their own good. And I, I had taken this picture of um, the, their, the chicken wire. Mm -hmm. Let me go back to all of them here, and I can show you maybe. Mm -hmm. Well, you can still see a lot of pictures scrolling by. I do a lot mm -hmm. of process shots as I go. Okay, here it is. Fantastic. This is the um, the reference that I compiled. So the background is a mm -hmm. picture of the chicken wire with the dewdrops, which attracted mm -hmm. my attention, and that is a chrysalis that I found out in the chicken coop one day. And then superimposed on top, you can just kind of see that uh, Fibonacci spiral in there. Uh -huh. So that's what I started with. And then as I go through, you know, I'm thinking a, a chrysalis is a sort of confinement, mm -hmm. it's a choice. You know, they don't, well, they don't have a choice. They have to go through this, right? right. This is right. written into their genes. They couldn't stop it if they wanted to. Mm -hmm. But um, so that kind of, you know, was working on that confinement theme, did some sketching, so rough sketching, playing with the form and the values um, in there to see if I, for color, if I can get that to read in a two dimensional way, trying to get those little dewdrops in there without going mad. There was a lot of them. Yeah. You know, here's a, here's the sketch on better paper where it's getting bigger. And I started reducing the number of, um, well, the wires in there to mm -hmm. coincide with the, um, dimensions of that Fibonacci spiral. Ooh. Um, kind of thinking yeah. about, you know, some of our confinement issues are, well, they're, they're internally made, you know, mm -hmm. we're confined by our own choosing sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, but this is the steps working through that, playing with the, uh, the spider web in there, making it simpler. Mm -hmm. um, continuing on through here. So here it is starting with the, uh, the underpainting in the final thing, and it still was going through changes mm -hmm. at this point where I'm like, well, what if, you know, I do different colored backgrounds, <coughs> try different backgrounds there. There's both of them together. Which one is going to be, which one's going to read like I want. Um, mm -hmm. I like to play with uh, contrasting colors there. Here it is in the values, um, mm -hmm. starting to build it up here and the different underpaintings will give it a different look. Mm -hmm. And playing with that, I'm trying to get to the point where I started thinking, well, what if those, here we go, the one on the right there, the pink, um, mm -hmm. you can see there's fewer and fewer dewdrops in there. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, do I really need all of those? What can I leave out? And then you get here 
-hmm. and I'm starting to strategically place them mm -hmm. um, uh, in reference to things. And after a while, I settled on just a few. Mm -hmm. oh, and there you can see my sweet <laughs> kitty helping me out. She was such a great help. Oh yeah. I ended up settling on. Did I do, no, I did the blue. I actually did the, the pink. Was an was an uh, an oops. Mm -hmm. Let me let me fast forward here. Here you can see where I settled on a very strategic placing of those little dewdrops or air bubbles, depending on how they look to you. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can see the the reference there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The one one two three five. Yeah. So I was like, ooh. So I ended up going with yeah. that, but this, it just kind of continued. Even after I'd settled on the, all the colors I'd settled on what I was doing, that was a last thing. And then also taking those spider webs and using mm -hmm. them to come out from mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. uh, the spines on this chrysalis, which I think is a morning cloak chrysalis, if I remember correctly, though they are not bright pink. Okay. I just, I like that pink against yes. that kind of teal and green and blue. Okay. Mm-hmm. I just love those colors. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the process. There oh, it's is fascinating. Final. I had actually. I've read just, some Amor Tools. I haven't read that book, but I've read other Amor I'm Tools. I'm still, I need to finish reading it. I kind of stopped. I need to get back to it. Because at the time when I did this, I had not read much of it. So I was really playing superficially with these concepts yeah. of confinement, you know, and what that meant. Remind me again, which, which Tools title? Um, A Gentleman in Moscow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I've got mm -hmm. myself a, a used copy from our local used book purveyor, Yellow Dog, downtown. Uh -huh. um, and one more thing about the, the final piece. I don't know if you can tell from the image. Can mm -hmm. I zoom in and will it zoom in for you guys? Probably. Oh, it doesn't show in this piece. Where is I actually wired into the frame. Mm. Um, just wanted to make sure it stayed put and stayed flat. And mm -hmm. so I actually drilled holes. Okay. <laughs> in it and use some wire just to kind of further, um, further, uh, I guess, convey that feeling of, you know, mm -hmm. confinement and constraint. And yeah, so I was, I was, that was the first one I've done where I was really happy with the outcome, not just being a direct interpretation of a scene mm -hmm. or something. It's like, you know, I felt like, okay, I may have gone a little beyond. Maybe it's, it's very hard. It's a hard thing for me to do. I've not done a lot of it. Well, I thought it was really neat when I looked at it on your website yesterday, as I was just kind of looking through, I knew I had seen several pieces that I had thought it would be fun uh, to work on. Um, and I saw that one and I just thought, Ooh, you know, for all of Casper's ghostly mystique for all of the, you know, for a place where literally anything can happen, um, that seemed like something I would like to help make happen in Casper. Um, and it's it's fascinating that it started with a chrysalis on a chicken coop and an Amor Tools novel. <laughs> I love it. Who knew those things had anything in common, right? <laughs> yep. I was just looking over at, at Stephanie's comments, which she's yeah. got some great ones as usual. Um, <clears throat> seeing the comma and pausing and a forced pause, which definitely, you know, that's what it was. Or in, in the case of the chrysalis and in the character in the book, mm -hmm. they, they had a forced pause, definitely. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Stephanie. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, yeah, just a weird one. I look at it beside all the other stuff and I'm just like, that's weird. Yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep, yep. Which would explain the draw for me. <laughs> you know, and I do love surrealism. Sure. You know, I just, I've never felt comfortable doing it. So mm -hmm. maybe I will now. Well, and I think it's what you described is fascinating. And I think if we had Magritte here, he would probably be willing to talk us through like, how do you get to a giant pair? How do you get to a guy who's invisible in the hats up here? You know, um, every artist process is their own. Yeah. It all begins in the world we know in some way. Mm -hmm. um, very cool. Very, very cool. So yes, I will be then writing up something for the Casper Wildlife Guide from Hope's work. Um, 
And then in turn, I, I'm going to write up a piece for Hope. Hope is going to get to create some sentient kelp for you all. <laughs> How do you feel about writing about sentient kelp? Well, I'm excited. <laughs> I am too now, but at first, my first thought was, well, there's something I've never thought of. In the mall. <laughs> sentient kelp in the mall. In the mall. Ooh, in the mall. Even better. It's part of the universe that uh, Octavia, the octopus crossing guard, is part of. So, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm very excited. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go completely under the sea here. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Yep. 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 That's so, great. yeah, I've, I'm discovering as I go back and I looked back over all those materials this week that I've proposed in the, you know, the little, oh, uh, officious little bureaucratic precy that goes with each of these entries um, that there is a larger guide that catalogs all of the intersect. Yes, <laughs> Stephanie, yes, you're hearing that correctly. Sentient kelp and mall. Yep. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. It's it is. You know, you never know. You never know. Um, but that it's, you know, it's been so fun to create this notion that there's a ghostly um, plant guide and there's a ghostly wildlife guide and that they're both sort of um, extractives for general readership out of the more academic tome uh, that is the encyclopedic uh, listing of all of the ghostly universes that have been documented as intersecting with Castor. And I'm realizing that larger encyclopedic tome only kind of exists up here in peace. <laughs> Um, and some of them kind of mutually contradictory pieces. So this is a kind of fun way of keeping me honest about the mythos I'm creating around Casper. Because, no, no, that's, that's this universe. That's it. And, you know, that's this one over here. And oh, I have an adorable cat who's now watching me make hand gestures. <laughs> Suddenly cat comes flying through the air. You want to be on camera? Well, they all love this painting back here. So oh, yes, we all do. We, our little seven pounder tried to climb the painting earlier this week while I was on a Zoom call with somebody. Of course. <laughs> I know, I know. And, and in fact, um, in another writer thing, um, I was talking about a possible like um, Atlantis kind of scenario with a private investigator who had an office above a bar. Um, and that's, uh, the, uh, I think Harper Kincaid gets credit for, um, saying, so this would be like Pirates of the Caribbean meets SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, all right, so when yeah. you put it that way. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As long as I have to draw, draw SpongeBob. <laughs> <laughs> no, I will not make you draw SpongeBob. <laughs> nope. Nope. And and I don't know. I've I've only ever seen clips of SpongeBob. I don't think there's any sentient kelp in SpongeBob. Could be wrong. I've not watched a lot of it, but I don't think so. It's it's there. You know, kelp is like there. Yes. We're, but it was never it's... sentient. Interesting. Yeah, I'm, that's that's going to be an interesting journey. I'll definitely um, create, I'll definitely make a link. And I do got links. I do got, I do have, I do wow, English is my language here. I have a link to videos on my channel where I've done um, time lapse mm -hmm. of that, uh, mm -hmm. that work. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. Can I put it in, let's see, the time lapse video. I guess I can put it in the comments. We'll see how that goes. So that. Okay. I don't know if you can click. I can't. If I click on it, it's just going to show it, which looks like garbage. Okay. But, but uh, perhaps that will link. Um, if I click again, it says put user in time. Yeah, put myself in timeout. No. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Hi, buddy. Runs off camera to save the cat, <clears throat> or something. 
we've reached the mommy's not paying attention to me, so I'm going to start knocking things off the table stage. Wow. She's been very patient, or he's been very patient. He is. He's he's the cat boy I can allow down here while I'm trying to actually do work things. The oh. others are, no. <laughs> Don't even come. No. Again, no. The, the little bit figured out how to move pictures on the wall this week. And she's like, hey, guys, did you know parts of the mall move? Parts of the wall move if you do this. <laughs> Yes. Oh, Ooh. lovely. Lovely. Uh -huh. lovely, lovely. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I've had the experience of walking in a kelp forest um, in the ocean once Ooh. in my life. Ooh. A high school trip to France. We went to the beach at Saint Malo and um, the whole first like 20 feet of ocean were all just these kelp forest shallows wow. and it was this incredibly surreal atmosphere so that can imagine inspiration for the sentient kelp came from <laughs> get out of my fronds waving <laughs> you know and you're walking through it and it just it's just kind of petting you as you go through <laughs> I hadn't thought of it that way, but okay, yeah. <laughs> Being petted by sea kelp. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's strange. I thought there was some, that's reminding me of something I've listened to. I think it was a podcast story where there was an alien and they, you know, they, they like to pet people too. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently it's a thing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm hmm. Well, we like to pet the cats and the dogs. Well, yeah, yeah. Cats like it too. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was kind of, yeah, along those lines. I can see that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're going to have fun. This will be our exchange. We'll do another live stream at the end of the exchange. Yes. Um, Hope can talk more about her process. Um, kind of manifesting the sentient kelp on paper. In, yeah, how to do that. And I will read you the bits I come up with, both about the the kelp um, and what I come up with in response to imperative constraint, Hope's uh, beautiful painting. Or it, it's not a painting, it's a, is it a pastel? Depends on who you ask. Okay. There's a, a big body of, uh, a big group of groups International Association of Pastel Societies, right? Mm -hmm. And they define it as a painting if you can't see the paper under it anymore. What did I tell you? They all love the painting behind. <laughs> so even our sweet boy yep, are eventually. most likely to be best behaved. Even he is now desperate enough for mommy attention that he mm -hmm. is gonna... I see it. Uh -huh. I'm just, I'm just walking by. Yep. La, 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 la. He's, our, he's our little bear cub. Right, weedy. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, YouTube. This is another of the cats. <laughs> <laughs> He's being much more polite than his brother. The time I met his brother down here, um, his, his brother attempted to eat bits off of the painting while I was talking and then turned and kind of mugged at the camera. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can totally see that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I think it will be fun. I think it'll be uh, yes. a kind of neat project. It's a nice sideways way for me to come at uh, all the underlying mythos of Casper and to think um, more analytically than narratively about what I'm creating. So mm -hmm. that's, it's a, a neat perspective. So then when I'm in the story, then more of these ambient details are established, you know, instead mm -hmm. of, you know, what was I writing about? Now where, <laughs> where, where did I say last time? Oh yeah. It's right. It's that kind of thing. Uh, I'm definitely looking forward to the, the opposite side of that is pulling them and, and making them visual, you know, Mm -hmm. That is a different exercise, you know, and, and it, to pull something completely out of your head is, for me, is, is very difficult. I'm used to, you know, having a reference, you know, right there. Here, this is what I'm trying to do. This, this right here. 
mm-hmm. you know, like, you know, like a leaf or a this or a that, and mm-hmm. but then starting to combine things in a way um, is is a fun challenge, you know, especially with starting with words. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, I'm very looking forward to that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we have to keep the pattern right. I mean, yeah, right. we do. Get us <laughs> sure. Especially since it kind of looks like he's sitting on my shoulder over here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> The devil on your shoulder. No, he'd be the angel, wouldn't you, baby? You're the angel. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Angel with the crooked halo. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're gonna be loving me. Chucking that halo at you, hitting the back of the head with it. <laughs> Doink. All right. Anything else you can think of, Hope, that we should tell the good folks about what we're up to? Not that I can think of. I probably will. As soon as we sign off, I'll think, oh, we should have said, you know. Um, Timeline, six to eight weeks. Yeah. Uh, we did before. Yeah. All life, uh, all things considered, you know, life, uh, what's the word? Uh, co- if life cooperates, you know, we'll yeah. six to eight weeks. But yeah. Um, now we're going to keep this like all, all secret until we're done and and then uh, yeah, you know. we kind of did last time, but of we course, did. we're still learning our way around different indie writer, indie artist, promotional channels. So mm-hmm. um, what are your thoughts? Should we update folks in between now and then on social media? Should we wait and do the big reveal? I think keeping it simple is going <laughs> to... Simple you know, is good. Simple, simple is good yes. for our complex lives. At this time, you know, maybe, you know... Maybe then maybe next time see about we'll have a, a halfway reveal what we've done mm-hmm. kind of thing. If we do something, maybe if it takes longer mm-hmm. or we can say, you know, definitely six to eight weeks, no matter where we are, we're going to stop and there share. Mm-hmm. That would, you know, maybe that would be the way to go. Goal is to have it done. But right. should life make other plans for us like it usually does? Yes. Yes. <laughs> And it would be fun to do, you know, we had done one of these this summer and then anticipated doing one again, I think sooner than we have, but we are doing one again. (laughs) We We got here. It just took longer. The trip here was a little different than than planned, but. Which I think is a pandemic thing for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know very few people who are. Let's see. This is February. So middle of April. Am so, I, I don't early, carry a calendar here, so early ish April, sure. Early April. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. It should work. I don't think oh. I have I look in I, I have to look at my calendar, but I don't think I have anything going on that would yeah. make that not work, but I don't have anything planned. Hi. That doesn't take that. into account the unplanned. Uh-huh. Sweet <laughs> boy. So yeah. Okay. Okay. So we'll, we'll just we'll we'll keep it secret, hush hush, mm-hmm. until early April. We'll yep. have another one of these mm-hmm. and reveal either the finished product or what we've done. Sounds good. And as for getting you more, a little more narrative around the sentient kelp, a little more context, I will flip that over to you in the next week. Okay. That's. I'll start looking at pictures of kelp and learning about kelp. I don't think I'll be able to walk through any anytime soon. Sadly, that would be a fun. That would be a fun adventure, but I'll have to rely on yours for that. There's what if you're if you you've done some swimming at Stevens Lake, the moss <laughs> down at the bottom. That's kind of there's there's a little bit of similarity there. Well, I've I've been in the ocean, you know, in California, and I've I've been you know boogie boarding kind of thing. So I've felt it on my legs, you know, which is always freaks you out when you don't expect it. Uh But I've not, you know, walked between them on the bottom. He's always at the top. Uh 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 They were tickling my feet as I went by. Uh Uh Very cool. All right. That sounds good to me. Okay. Okay. One last look at the cat. Everybody. Okay. Kitty. Go back and stop trying to eat things off the painting. Yeah, please, please don't eat the painting. We love it. <laughs> Stephanie asks, is there kelp in Hawaii? I have no idea. I'm assuming so. Interesting question. I don't know. Um, it does better in more stagnant water, I 
think is the idea. Um, because the beach at San Malo was, um, it might have been a beach on the English Channel rather than like true ocean or however you want to categorize that. Let's see. Uh, Google says the main islands have several established invasive seaweeds, but the remote northwest, cases in the remote northwest are rare, blah, blah. So, okay. so we're all going to learn more about kelp here. We're going to learn more about kelp. Okay. Apparently the native edible seaweed, I'm not even going to try and pronounce it, usually found on the islands of Hawaii, Maui, and Kaui? Kauai? Mm -hmm. So there we go. Thick mat-like spreads. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yes, cursory inspection seems to say that yes, it does grow in Hawaii. Okay. You're welcome. <laughs> Have fun, Stephanie. <laughs> <sighs> Don't Yay. get lost in the kelp. Should they try and pet you and take you home? <laughs> Remind me of other places to be. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. All right. I don't, th I, I think that's it. Okay. That I've got for today. Hey, Jade. A friend of mine just showed up. Yay. Jade, there's her. Jade. She Yay. is. Her, she. I met Jade at the Cedar Creek. Cool. The therapy horse place. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'll be going mm -hmm. back there soon. Does yeah. it start this month? I have to check my calendar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I put it on the calendar so I can check it regularly. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Well, it's good to see you, Jade. I'm glad you could stop by. We're getting ready to kind of hang it up here. So the recording will be available to listen to. Um, you don't know Marta over here. Hi. Marta is a writer, and she, her two channels that she's got, if you're interested in doing any writing, Jade, and need some help, she has some wonderful content on her channels to walk you through step-by-step -step how to write a novel. Is it a full novel, Marta, or just a novella? 60,000 words is kind of baseline for a full novel. Okay, yeah. So, mm -hmm. Oh, well, and, and great. Now, having said that, you know, <laughs> now we're going to be flooded with comments that are like, no, no, the baseline is 40,000 words. How could you say that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody breathe. Everybody breathe. <sighs> the baseline, the break between novel and novella is 40,000 words, but a lot of novels, especially first novels, end up right around the 60,000 mark. So that's what I had folks shoot for as a draft. And even if writing isn't your thing, she does some great book recommendations. I've picked up several books. Um, because of the recommendations that she's made, um, looking at very diverse authors, different backgrounds. And I'm actually yes. breaking the format now. The Yeah, uh, that's right. After doing it every day for NaNoWriMo um, and then taking a, a breather, um, I realized I, I stay on track better with a shorter video. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm going to be doing the edit your novel content um, videos separate from the book review videos. And then I'll just okay. pop in book reviews as I have them ready. So awesome. Yeah. They're, and they're great. I've really enjoyed them. What was the, um, oh, I can't even think Is of it. Master of Gin. You read Master of Gin. Yes. Who writes that? Uh, Fenderson Jelly Clark. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and those, those are wonderful. And then the little bitty books that he's got available that are kind of some pre- Right. Story um, mm -hmm. information was one. It was a quick read. Like yep. I said, I was kind of sad when yep. I was done. It's like, oh, now I'm done. The so, audiobook narration yeah. is fantastic too. Is it? Okay. Okay. And then, see, so you're doing your alternating channels. You're doing your book recommendations. I've got weekly studio updates that come out Saturday publicly. Mm -hmm. And then Mondays, no, it'll come on Wednesdays. Wednesdays, I'm just, I just, Monday, I sit down and and just sketch something, anything, just for me to kind mm -hmm. of keep keep that going. And then that comes up available on Wednesdays and um, publicly. And then just whatever little videos that kind of come to mind. The one I'm thinking about uh, next is DIY tools for soft okay. pastels because you can buy, you know tons of stuff, but mm -hmm. sometimes you got to use what you've got. So I was going to share my favorite yeah. DIY tools. So mm -hmm. there you go. We kind of talked about what we're doing on our channels. That's a good thing to, that we should go. be doing. 
Um, Stephanie, I do see your question about posting a link to my channel or channels. Mm -hmm. um, I'm having coordination issues figuring out how to pull that link without shutting down the live stream. Let's see. Let's see if I can I can include them real quick. Okay. Oh, good. Oh, you've got us. Okay. I'm just a little afraid of vanishing off. Sure, sure. So here really is. I initiated the broadcast. I'm not sure what happened to the rest of the broadcast if I went by. Right. Whoops. And there she is. <laughs> okay. So there, sh there she is, that, that auto load video. I wish there was a better way to do that. So here is her sci fi seminar link. We've got to get her up to. 100 subscribers so that she can get a better URL. Yay! And then um, let's see. We, we have the magical mystery. Maybe if I can type magical mystery class. So here's probably going to come another. Shoosh. Let's see. Here. Let's see this. The other one is, I think, is the video link. Here is the channel link for the um, magical sure. mystery class. Sure. So uh, let's see. Let's see, here's what we've got to get her. If we get once you get to 100 subscribers, it starts. You can choose it. Here's what mine looks like. So. A there little more intelligible by a brain. Sure. An organic brain. Sure. Sure. So right. we've got mm -hmm. to get, cool. get her to those. That All right. Awesome. So there's all three channels. We talked about what our channels are going to be doing, what we're doing. I think we're really good now. Mm -hmm. And the cat has lost interest in painting. So <laughs> there, there go. goes the great visual content. <laughs> We're just not as cute and fuzzy. Who wants to watch a cat attack in abstract painting? <laughs> what do we do without them? Mm. All righty then. Thank Shall you, we Stephanie. close up, folks? Yeah. Thank you, Stephanie and Jade, for stopping by. Mm -hmm. Really, really appreciate it. We feel a little more like normal. People. Yes, Steph oh, yeah, people. Stephanie says thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Yeah. And uh, we'll do this again early April. Maybe we'll <laughs> figure it all out by then. Probably not, but we'll try a little mm -hmm. bit more. Mm -hmm. Not all of it. I'm sure we will still be a source of amusement to the teenagers in our lives. Oh, of course. That's what we live for, isn't it? <laughs> 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 all righty then. I think we are good. Thank you, Marta. Okay. This was a lot I'm going to click end broadcast. All right. We'll see what happens. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you, Stephanie. Bye. Thank you, Jade. Bye, Jade. <laughs>